Welcome back to the Lane Ferris Show. Now I know what you're thinking. Lane, how can you be so pretentious as to say you know what I'm thinking? Also, I have changed my brand name from Magic Cheese Company to Wellington Independent. There are a few reasons why I did so. One, to be taken more seriously. It's hard to imagine a studio called Magic Cheese becoming mainstream, let alone defeating Disney. I believe that the first impressions of a brand may be crucial for people to get into. I will say that there is Rooster Teeth which is strange but mainstream, and in hindsight Magic Cheese is kind of fitting as my works are very diverse, ranging from the classic Friend Day and Friend B series of Spring Branch to an 1800s drama of the demon inside, further emphasizing how looks can be deceiving. However, it still may come across as unprofessional and give people the wrong idea. 2. It is a more personal name. Magic Cheese Company was conceived in 2013, which of course doesn't promise much as I was 12 years old. At that time, I pretty much just mashed a random adjective and a random word together and called it a brand. Now why Wellington Independent? Well, it comes from something in my childhood which I place a lot of importance in. Lately I have been going down a bit of a political rabbit hole and sometimes fantasize of conquering the world. In the case this happens, I can think of no name more appropriate than such. But listen, in the case I get tyrannical, don't take your anger out on anyone there if you find the place I'm talking about. Harming innocence as proxies to a figure of evil in the name of justice is the most corrupt hypocrisy I can imagine. And three, it is more discoverable. Magic cheese is difficult in that you have to spell it exactly how it is, meaning with both words sharing a C, in order to get results. This, I can imagine, would be an obstacle to gaining traction. Wellington Independent can also be mixed in with the school district, which I'm sure is at least something to bank on. Now aside from the name, my logo has also obligatorily changed to a red pseudo 3D Penrose triangle, which I consider much more professional in appearance as I believe is an important part in gaining momentum. Besides just thinking it looks cool, I would say it can be a metaphor for doing the impossible as I have very big goals. Alright, with the new branding out of the way, I'll also elaborate on some status updates. Voice acting is complete with the exception of Sadie's second half. The remainder is to be addressed at another time, so while you will begin the animation process this summer. Also, I have a number of plans in mind to garner publicity, with the first of which of course relying on my main contributor, Demotivational Video, which I will expand on further in the next episode. It is what I call the only successful project of mine and the first major step for Magic Cheese, or now Wellington. At the time of this video, it has over 28,000 views and the rate seems to be accelerating. The second asset would be that I have joined a writing club in college and at one point they had presentation days where we can essentially share a PowerPoint on any topic we want as long as it follows some certain guidelines including no Brunos. Apparently, it's an inside joke from the film Encanto that you don't speak of the name Bruno. That was actually a rule. Your presentation cannot mention it under any context. I mean, maybe that would be slightly funny if I understood the joke, but to actually enforce that rule seems kind of destructive. What if someone had a genuinely insightful point about Bruno Mars, but they couldn't share it because of a joke? That's like if we took the stupid Eat the Rich slogan far enough to actually implement policies that advocate the cannibalistic consumption of upper-class citizens. Anyway, I did mine on a fundamental explanation of World Beta, which I will also elaborate further in a future video, and one of the leading members said he was engaged and offered to have a written script for it published in some kind of campus magazine. Learning from the past, it might not be as big as it sounds, but hey, if I'm lucky, that may actually be what it sounds like. My third approach would be what I call the summer strategy, in which I will upload several videos this summer, every Sunday, as that tends to be the best time to establish a pattern which I believe is a common effective procedure. I have over a dozen Lane Ferris show ideas, so creativity is far from problem. Fourth will be credibility appeal. I plan to recruit voice actress Kira Buckland for Sadie, and I can imagine that having any kind of celebrity should serve as a highlight. If not her, I will look for others. Hopefully, I would also be able to negotiate a shout-out plan to more confidently assure traction. And fifth, the Avenge Walt movement. If I begin to see progress, I will capitalize on it to start a campaign that calls for people to boycott companies that corporatize the entertainment industry, thus subjugating individuality, as well as promote a culture of merit and improvement. Details are largely to be unpacked later, but I plan to release an introductive video when the situation is right. 
Alright, so that's all for now. I expect to see you not long afterwards with my next video being my current thoughts on demotivational video as I have mentioned before. Thanks for watching and I encourage you to subscribe. And I guess ring the bell? It can ensure better traction, but honestly I think subscribing should be good enough. Anyway, this has been The Landfair Show and I bid you good night.